Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. If you're looking for an exercise that's gonna help your left foot, I've got something awesome for you, okay? You wanna, you wanna get your left foot like it's on steroids, you wanna get it under total control as good as your right foot, right? I mean, we all have that problem, like our left foot seems like it just hangs out there sometimes and it's not as strong as our right foot, we use our right foot all the time, and the left foot on the hi-hat, it just, Sometimes it gets left out. Well, this is an exercise that's gonna change all that, okay? The only thing you're gonna need, other than, you know, an instrument, is uh, Gary Chester's book, New Breed. You can find that all over the place. It's super popular. If you don't have one yet, you gotta get one, okay? But regardless, if you don't have one, um, you can make up your own for now until you get one. Um, I'll talk you through the process. The idea is simple. The, you know, execution of it is, can be pretty tough, but if you start off slowly, it's gonna be great. All right. This is Gary Chester's The New Breed. Okay, you can see it here. Well, up goes, boom, smack. Okay, so this book is all about taking uh, certain reading exercises. Uh, it gives you melodies, melodies to work on, um, pairing them with um, different types of grooves in the other limbs. Okay, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna set up a steady groove with our ride cymbal, our snare drum, and our bass drum. These three are gonna be really simple. Okay. Bass drum, we're going four on the floor, not too loud, nice and soft, okay? Maybe even the softer the better. Sometimes I practice it feathering it. Um, sometimes I practice it a little louder as like a rock scenario. Whatever one you want is fine. Two and four, I'm hitting rim shots. I like them big and beefy. That's great, whatever. And then here, um, we're gonna play one and a two and a three and a four and a, uh, and we're going to accent the downbeats. The best place to start is just with those three instruments, okay? Before you even jump into reading the book, you need to have a metronome going. Oh, I forgot my metronome. Well, where is it? We're back. I've got my metronome. Once again, we've got, we're gonna start with the ride cymbal, the snare, and the kick all together. So, I'm gonna play these three, and while I have the chance, I'm focusing on making really good sounds, staying really in time, and really even, okay? Let's set it to 72. And one, two, ready, play. Okay, perfect. Another way you could change that up is that you could put the ride bell on the downbeats, right? I'm gonna do readings uh, 1B, 4A, and 5A. I had to get my notes out to remember that. For today's purposes, I'm only gonna play the first line of E. Remember what we've got going on over here? So our left foot is going to be playing the melody. The hi-hat is playing the melody. I, I want to try my best to balance the hi-hat with the rest of the limbs. The hi-hat, we wanna hear it, okay? We're gonna start with reading 1B. That's page 15, okay? And we're gonna take each measure do them four times each, and we're just gonna do the first line. Okay, let's give it a shot.
not bad. Okay, I got off with the metronome a little bit. That's just a little reflection on my part. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, usually if I make a mistake, I'm playing these for long enough. I definitely, you never stop when you make a mistake, okay? You play through them. You try to make sure that you uh, get back on. You listen really carefully, but don't stop, okay? Never stop. If you're playing a show, you're in the middle of a song, stopping is the worst thing you can do. Don't practice like that, okay? Practice like you're performing. Now, let's go to uh, 4A, definitely more challenging, okay? I skipped a couple pages here. There's lots more in between, but I just wanted to get through it so you could see. Four bars of groove, get into the melody. As you get better and better at it, it's going to get a little bit cleaner. Uh, one thing that I would say while you're playing these, um, you know, be really careful to relax that left leg. Do your best to, especially as you're doing two notes at a time or three, to really lift the leg up. Not, uh, don't, don't try to squeeze it. Just kind of lift the leg up and let it drop. Lift the leg and let it drop. So the first motion for me is a lot with my leg, and then the secondary motions are with my ankle. That helps to alleviate a lot of the stress from playing that. Don't worry about if you get splashes or not. That's fine to me. I think that's great. It's a melody. It can, you know, do whatever. Yeah, so I mentioned before, if you make a mistake not to stop, uh, making a mistake is actually a good thing because it helps you recognize maybe what your weak point is, and then you know immediately what you can do to improve on it. So what I would do is when I make a mistake on a certain measure, I'll take it and I'll just loop that measure until I know like it's it's in there, it's ingrained and it's not going to leave me. Okay, so that's that's a really uh, that's a really big part of playing these is to do do these over and over again until you can't lose them. Uh, you may have noticed that I took my eyes off the music from uh, once I got the hang of it, right? So the idea behind these is especially look at them the first couple times and then take your eyes off of it. See if you can play it from memory, right? Internalize it, hear it in your head, so hear that melody, right? You've already got all the, lit, the you know, these three on autopilot. Have that left foot really act like a true melody and play it from memory, okay? So it's this own thing floating above everything else. Now, full disclosure, I've never read page 22, not yet. 5A, reading 5A. That means I'm going to need to slow it down considerably and take my time, okay? So this would be my process if I'm doing these for the first time, right? So I'm playing the groove, but I'm playing it nice and slow. Let's play it here. and you feel good about that, that's when you start adding them in. Now, especially if I was playing it for the first time, I'm not going to read them four times, two times, one time. I'm going to sit on them until they're good, okay? And then I'll move on.
you'll notice I made a lot of mistakes in that one, okay? But what I tried to do is when I made the mistake, then I just, you know, concentrate on maybe what that mistake was. So when I came back around to that beat the next time, I tried to get better at it. Measures three and four obviously gave me a fit. So I sat on those a little while longer. Same as if I would in a practice session, in a actual practice session, I might even do it more. Another thing that I didn't mention before, but I should mention when you're playing these, is one thing you really want to focus on is verticality, okay? I think I've said that in one of my other videos before. Verticality is literally uh, how your limbs stack up on one another when you're playing. So we want to have good, strong vertical notes, right? We don't want this sound. When we mean to play all four notes at the same time, we want to have this sound. Everything hits as one. So when you're playing grooves, you get much tighter feels. Versus if you let them all kind of go and they're all playing at the same time. That can be cool in some settings, but in spe other specific settings, maybe not quite as cool. Thanks for stopping in today, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope this helps. If you do this for a long enough time, your left foot is going to be special. Go mean green. Go cats. Catch you later. Bye.